Hi, and welcome to the Focus on Eye Health Expert Series. I'm Jeff Todd, CEO of Prevent Blindness. Today, we're going to be exploring inflammatory eye disease with a couple of experts on the topic. Joining me is Dr. Anne Marie Lobo, an ophthalmologist specializing in this area, and Addison Schwaller, whose expertise comes from her personal experience with an inflammatory eye condition. Welcome to you both. Dr. Lobo, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you practice today, and what your area of expertise is? Sure, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. Um, my name is Anne-Marie Lobo. I am an ophthalmologist and I specialize in uveitis. Uh, I practice at the Illinois Eye and Ear Infirmary in um, Chicago. It's part of the University of Illinois at Chicago uh, Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. Thank you. Um, well, as you know, Prevent Blindness is currently raising awareness and education about inflammatory eye disease. Would you tell us a little bit about generally what inflammatory eye disease is and what differentiates it from other eye conditions that we may be aware of? Sure. So inflammatory eye diseases uh, can really encompass um, many different conditions uh, where inflammation uh, can affect the eye either from an autoimmune condition or sometimes from an infectious condition. And unlike other um, eye conditions, which can often affect um, the older individuals, um, inflammatory eye diseases can really affect individuals of all ages and uh, can come about any time in someone's life. Thanks, that's, you know, that's really useful. We often, um think of vision problems as something that impact those who are very young or those who are very old and don't often think of those um, kind of in the, the middle range, age ranges. Um, so what symptoms might someone experience if they um, have an inflammatory eye disease? Sure, so one of the most common types of inflammatory eye disease is a condition called uveitis. Uh, uveitis is inflammation inside of the eye. Um, in patients who have uveitis affecting the front part of the eye, they may experience symptoms such as pain in the eye or redness of the eye, some light sensitivity or blurring or clouding of the vision. In patients who experience uveitis um, affecting um, the back of the eye, they may experience symptoms uh, of floaters, or floating spots in the vision, sometimes flashing or flickering lights, and also decreased or blurred vision. Great. Um, and Addison, I understand that you've been living with an inflammatory eye condition for a few years now. Could you tell us a little bit about the condition that you have? Yeah, absolutely. So I was diagnosed with pars planitis or intermediate uveitis back in probably 2017 when I was a student in undergrad and really just started having symptoms of, of floaters for probably a couple of years and really didn't think anything of it. And then had blurry vision that was kind of progressive and really like couldn't see like the board in class as well. Couldn't read um, Microsoft Word on my computer, like had to zoom in more than, you know, a hundred percent and was like, oh, I guess that's just the way it is now. Um, never needed glasses and then went to an optometrist who didn't really know what was going on, sent me to an opto uh, ophthalmologist and then was diagnosed. Um, and since then have been seeing a couple different providers, tried a few different treatments and ended up seeing Dr. Lobo when those initial treatments ultimately failed to control the inflammation. How long were you living with the initial conditions before you um, decided to go seek care? Probably six months to a year because I really didn't know if it was just in my head or not, honestly, because I would have kind of blurry vision and it would get better and then get a little bit worse. It was kind of changing day to day and I didn't really bring it to the forefront of my mind. I was focused on other things until it just started progressing a little bit more. Sure. And, and how does this condition um, impact your daily living or how has it? Um, so before I was diagnosed, definitely just getting schoolwork done was 
more of an issue. I feel like eye fatigue and, and the blurry vision was um, definitely affecting just how hard I had to work or just quality of work. Um, and then now it's just kind of scheduling things around my treatments. I'm currently on Humira, so not only dealing with the insurance with that, making sure I keep insurance, um, making sure I pick up those prescriptions and keep things refrigerated and do things the proper way and just taking daily medications as well. Gotcha. Um, so Dr. Lobo, you mentioned uveitis briefly before. Could you tell us a little bit more about what exactly that is? So uveitis is um, inflammation inside of the eye, uh, in, including the pigmented structures inside of the eye, although other structures can also be involved. Um, as I mentioned before, uveitis can affect the front part of the eye um, or the back part of the eye or all parts of the eye. Um, uveitis can be related to um, an autoimmune condition or it can be due to infectious causes. And uveitis can be isolated um, to the eye or it can be associated with an underlying systemic condition. Um, some of the systemic conditions that um, can be involved include other autoimmune conditions, things like uh, lupus or sarcoidosis or um, inflammatory bowel diseases, uh, to name a few. Um, in patients with uveitis, um, there can be um, an acute type of uveitis where symptoms can come on um, relatively quickly. It can be treated and it can go away. There can be recurrent types of uveitis where um, an episode of uveitis can come on, it goes away, but then it can come back again at a later time. Or there can be chronic uveitis where the inflammation is ongoing for over three months and sometimes even longer than that, um, requiring treatment for a more prolonged period of time. Gotcha. So another condition that we hear a little bit about is keratitis. Could you sh share a little bit about what that is and how it's treated? Sure, so keratitis is um, inflammation involving the cornea, which is the clear part of the eye, um, uh, sort of the front window of the eye is what we call it. The most common type of keratitis that we see uh, is due to infections um, and most commonly in patients who either wear contact lenses or who have had some type of trauma or injury to the eye. Um, uh, autoimmune or non-infectious keratitis is less common, and uh, so we don't see that as much. Gotcha. Um, do you see a higher prevalence of inflammatory eye disease in certain groups of individuals? So as I mentioned before, uh, inflammatory eye disease can affect individuals at, of all age groups. Uh, so we see very young children up to um, elderly patients with these conditions. Um, however, unlike other um, conditions that can affect the eyes, things like cataracts or glaucoma, which we normally see as people get older, um, it's more common potentially to see inflammatory eye diseases in the working age population. So patients ages 20 um, to 60 years of age. And, uh, and it is also more common to see inflammatory eye diseases in um, female patients, uh, mainly because many inflammatory eye diseases are related to autoimmune conditions and autoimmune conditions are more common in female patients. Okay, I'd like to uh, turn a little bit and talk about clinical trials. Um, why do you think clinical trials are so important, um, particularly for eye care? Yeah, so clinical trials are a, a really important way for uh, demonstrating uh, the safety and effectiveness of new treatments for uh, various ocular conditions, including inflammatory eye diseases. And, uh, and it's, it's really important. Uh, inflammatory eye diseases can sometimes be more challenging to treat, and it's um, great to have these clinical trials um, uh, demonstrate that some of these newer treatments that are coming 
um, about can be safe, both safe and effective for the treatment of these conditions. Are there any examples you might provide of, of um, a discovery that was made through a clinical trial that has helped advance eye care? Yeah, so, you know, Addison mentioned that she's on um, a medication called Humira, and, uh, and there were a number of um, large-scale um, clinical trials looking at the use of adalimumab or Humira for the treatment of uveitis and, um, and leading to FDA approval for um, Humira for the treatment of non-infectious uveitis. And um, up until that point, uh, we really didn't have any other treatments that were other than corticosteroids that were FDA approved for the treatment of uveitis. And so um, again, these clinical trials can really help um, bring some of these newer treatments um, to our patients and um, as a way of really being able to help treat um, inflammatory eye diseases, expanding our armamentarium of, of medications that can treat these conditions. So do you have any advice for patients who might be interested in exploring um, clinical trials or if they're eligible for them? Sure, so you know, if, if, um, if patients are interested in participating or learning more about clinical trials, um, definitely talk to your doctor there are um, many different trials going on for various ocular conditions, and your doctor can help uh, to understand, you know, with you whether you are maybe eligible for some of these, uh, participating in some of these clinical trials, and uh, and you know, it's great because we definitely need patients to participate in some of these trials so that we can um, again expand our. Uh, our array of medications that can be used to, to treat um, our patients and, and help patients going forward. Gotcha. Um, Addison, I understand that you work in healthcare. Were you very familiar with inflammatory eye disease or your condition before you had you experienced it yourself? Um, actually, no. So I was still an undergrad. I think I had gotten done with anatomy and was in the middle of physiology and really we don't go that far into the eye um, at that level. So a lot of that at the time of my diagnosis was just Googling and figuring it out myself and talking to my doctor at the time. Um, when I went to PA school, we talked a little bit more about it and some of the systemic autoimmune conditions and um, inflammatory and infectious conditions that can be associated with uveitis, but still having the kind of prior knowledge about my own body helps a little bit with that understanding. Yeah, I think it's kind of um, systemic as a society at, uh, at large that we really don't think about our eyes um, in the same way we do much of our other um, healthcare. Um, Addison, so what would you um, want others to know about the importance of routine eye care? Um, I think it's very undervalued and I think lost over a lot by people. I think a lot of people don't even go to a family doctor yearly for checkups and much less an eye doctor. But I mean, for me, especially getting, you know, listening not only to my body, but really just getting routine checkups helped prevent this getting a lot worse and getting the correct treatment. So I would just recommend listen to your body, get the annual eye exams, keep up on your eye health um, just so it doesn't get away from you or things happen that could be prevented or avoided. And Dr. Lobo, what, would, what should someone do if, if they think they might have some sort of a vision problem? Yeah, so as, you know, as Addison mentioned, um, I think the first step is um, seeking care. So, you know, don't ignore your symptoms. Um, go in and get your, um, your annual eye exam. And, um, and, you know, that's the best place to start. And then if you are diagnosed with um, a, a condition that needs further you know, management, then just following up and, and trying to, um, to stay again on top of um, those clinic visits and, um, and the treatments, which you know, it's it's should be an open discussion with your doctor so that you can understand fully um, what the treatments are for, what further testing you might need, 
um, so that you educate yourself and um, can sort of really take control of your own health. Uh, and I think that that's potentially the best way to, to move forward in, in terms of, of taking care of your eyes and your eye health. I kind of want to touch on that a little bit more, yeah. if that's okay. Sure. Um, she mentioned following up with treatments and things, which I think is a huge aspect. It, it goes beyond just the initial diagnosis, but following up with treatments that you might not want to do or might not sound very appealing, but realizing that the reality is if those treatments aren't followed up on or continued, that things could get a lot worse. Um, and so that's been a big thing for me, just you know, keeping up with making appointments, going to appointments, um, really talking about the options and continuing through with treatment. That's great advice. I think so many of us, and I'm guilty of this as well, only think about going to our eye doctor when we need to get our prescription updated. Um, and it's important to think about, about eye health um, in general overall. Well, thank you both for taking the time today to talk about this important um, topic. We really appreciate both of you. Thank you. Thank you.